Thank you so much for coming back. Thank you so much for your patience. This is Joanna, Joanna the Medium, and these are going to be readings for the month of May and June. They are coming late. I had um, some personal stuff come up. I had a loss in my family, and I was also hit with this energetic shift that made me feel, let's just say, discombobulated. So when that happens energetically, it's, it's, uh, it's an interesting thing to go through, but it renders me... Um, not as effective when it comes to connecting. So I had to honor myself and I had to honor um, my um, guides and I needed to stay back a little bit and just allow this to pass through. Um, the month of April and May have been quite challenging to say the least for many people. It has certainly been challenging for me. Uh, my my understanding is is that we were going through a massive massive energetic shift that has brought up a whole bunch of stuff to surface. So this would have affected differently uh, with to different people, but I am sure a lot of you will were affected by it. So I for me it's coming to the end, but it has certainly not been an easy um, time to send it, to say the least. Uh, the month of May and June readings, or the month of May and June, are interesting because they felt very transitory to me. There is a lot of change in the air, and this could be because it's an after effect of the energetic shift. Most of the signs, if not all of the signs, are going through a lot of changes, transitions, uh, a lot of endings, uh, but also starting new beginnings. So very interesting to see uh, almost every single one that I was doing had a component of ending on some levels and endings are not bad endings just means that we are done with it uh, our soul is done with it and says okay I want to experience something new and something different something much more uh, something bigger and it's time to leave some things behind so be prepared that the month of May and June or whatever is remaining in May. You may actually have experienced some of this in May, but because it's coming out a little bit later in May, um, you may have um, already experienced this or you will experience this in the remainder of May and June. So just be prepared that some of the energies are, might still feel a little bit shifty and slightly... Uh, uncomfortable not bad necessarily but slightly uncomfortable but I am being told that we're almost done with this energetic shift and it will not happen for many many years to come we'll have little shifts but this was quite uh, I almost said expensive it was, it was quite expansive and expensive on the energies or on my emotions at least uh, for sure um, of course these are general readings so please listen to them if they make sense to you great if not listen to your moon rising or your other signs or sun sign and of course if you would like a private session with me that information is down below under um, show more section I would be more than happy uh, honored to have a session with you I think that's all I want to uh, say thank you for your patience thank you for all your wishes a lot of you have written to me um, asking if I'm okay and um, yes I'm okay but it was it was uh, challenging to say the least but thank you all so much for your concern I truly truly appreciate it and I am back on a regular schedule and um, that's that's think that's all I want to say. So again, thank you so much and I look forward to seeing you in July. Without further ado, let's get started. Hello, beautiful Scorpios. This is going to be a reading for the remainder of May and June. I have my car, five cards laid down. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is going uh, somewhere. Um, so when I was meditating for... Uh, the sign of Scorpio or on the sign of Scorpio um, for the overall energy and I was asking for a card I kept seeing and hearing new beginnings new beginnings regarding creativity um, I was very much drawn to the solar plexus chakra which is where creativity is or comes from um, that is what I kept feeling and hearing as um, I was shuffling the card so I also hear new beginnings with regards to relationships. So we'll see what the relationship card is about. I don't know what they are. They're face down. So let's look at the first card that represents the overall energies for the remainder of May and June. Um, and the card is patience, but it's in reverse. 
So, as you guys know, I don't read cards the typical way. It is card number 14. I don't know what it represents in a traditional tarot deck. Uh, the, but I want to ask why it's being shown to me in reverse. I hear hasty decisions in a month of May or remainder of May, whatever it may be, uh, when you are listening to it and the month of June, there will be a tendency towards making a hasty decision or there might be a necessity towards making a hasty decision. Now, when I hear the words hasty, it doesn't always, to me, it doesn't necessarily go with needing to make a hasty decision, but for some of you, it may signify that the month of May and June represents something in front of you where you need to put all your eggs in one basket or you need to decide something very quickly. For some of you, this is going to be an energy around not making hasty decisions. And then I'm hearing the words relationships um, and jobs. So the month of May and June will most likely than not present situations to you where you will have a tendency to be hasty or make hasty decisions or move on with something or jump on board, jump on board with something. And they're saying not so fast. So there's a need to exercise patience and maybe patience is not your greatest vir virtue. Maybe it's something that you struggle with, but it is important to exercise patience in the month of June and May. For some of you, I have to be honest, I feel like I have to jump on board something quite quickly. So it's actually divided in half. Some of you, you will need to make a very quick decision regarding something, and I'm hearing finances, so this could be job related. And for some of you, it's not to make hasty decisions. So rarely do I get the overall energy split in two, but that's what's being presented, so you guys will know what this means. And you may already know in the month of May, by the time you hear this message that this has transpired and if not this will transpire for you in june now the card that represents um the chakra which should be focused on in the month of may and june we have the card called heart chakra so it's interesting that this is being shown because um let me just close the email i thought i did um when there was a message a moment ago about not jumping into any conclusions or not making any hasty decisions regarding a relationship, uh, this is the area you want to focus on, which is the heart chakra. You're being asked to make this, whatever transpires in the month of May and June, you're being, to ask, you, you, uh, you're being asked to focus on your feelings your heart and your intuition more so than your logic and what i'm hearing is that there will be a conflict between those two so you may be presented with something where you will need to decide and you will have conflicted information that come from your intellect versus from your heart and from your intuition you are being urged to make decision based on your gut feel. Now, obviously, if it doesn't make sense in your particular situation, you do what is most uh, beneficial or right for you. But for the overall consensus for most of you seems to be to go with your gut regarding some kind of a decision. And this has to do with finances. So it could be in work situation, it could be many different things it could be within a relationship something to do with finances for some of you not for all of you yes i keep hearing the same message pay attention to your feelings or your gut more so than your logic um, oftentimes our fears will become very prominent and our logic will be based on our fears of what or what we think is going to happen based on what has happened thus far so whatever is going to transpire in march or in may or june 
really pay attention to your heart, to your to your feelings, to your gut feel. Most importantly, now um, there's also a change coming forward for some of you, and I want to say for about a third of you, because I'm seeing the one one third change in occupancy. What does that mean? Work conditions. So some of you. Uh, well, it looks like a substantial number of you, a third of you will be faced with a decision again around work. Some of you will be decision around um, relationship, but I feel like a third of you is going to be affected by the work conditions. So um, let me just see if there's anything more that he can show me. Yeah, I see the number five, which represents changes. Five is also the month of May. So maybe changes will happen in a month of May. Maybe by the time you hear this, it has already happened. Or it'll happen around the month of May and or June. For some of you, it's going to be closer to July. But the next six to eight weeks from when you're watching it, um, recording this halfway through the month, through May, it will, um, this is going to transpire. Okay, so card that represents your relationships. Let's see what we've got. We have the card called Priestess. When I connect with this card, the message I get is stand alone. So let's see what this is about. Make decisions based on how you feel, not what you have been told. This is a message for some of you who are contemplating a decision around a romantic relationship. So make decisions based on what you feel, not what you have been told. I feel like some of you are questioning whether where you are or what you are doing in a, in a, in a given relationship is the right choice for you. Now, I don't read cards the regular way, meaning the traditional way. I still don't know how, but I'm looking at this card. And when I look at this card, this woman, um, high priestess or priestess, she trusts her inner knowing her head is up and is, her eyes are closed, signifying that she's looking for answers within and trusting what she receives. She's guided by her intuition. She's guided, not so much intellect, she's guided by her ability to sense things that may not be apparent to others. So what I hear is that this isn't about right or wrong. This is about what is right for you. Some of you regarding a relationship will make the decision to walk away. Now, this could be a romantic relationship. This could also be a relationship with a best friend, with a friend, um, with a family member or romantic. So it doesn't have to be just romantic. Um, a, a partnership, the partnership would feel more like work situation. There, some of you are going to make a decision to walk away. You're going to leave something behind or you're going to leave someone behind. And for those of you who this message is for, I feel you have been contemplating this for quite some time. You've been contemplating this for a while. This is not something that just spurs out of nowhere. This is something that has been with you for some of you for a few years. Okay. So this is whether you're single or, or whether you're with somebody, the relationship can be any relationship that is meaningful to you and you are emotionally connected with someone. There is a need to walk away from something. And this is something substantial. So this is a relationship uh, of a substantial nature. And for some of you, it's to do with home. Uh, some of you will be walking away from what you call home. Um, yeah, I, I see somebody walking away. Now, let me just see if there is a message for those of you who are single. Because this could also be for singles. The message that was just said. For those of you who are 
I feel like this message could be for everyone, but I specifically asked for those who are singles. For those who are singles I'll look and looking for a relationship, the message is be present in everything that you do. So I want to I want to ask for a bit of a, more of a exploration on this. If he can open this up for me. I don't know who it is that I'm tapping into. Maybe some of you, maybe just one. I feel like when I'm talking to a possible potential, I feel I'm not present. I'm everywhere, but with the person that I am with. So if you are in the process of looking for a relationship and you find yourself not being present, it is going to be very difficult to establish a meaningful relationship when you are not present. And I feel that the reason why you are not present, whoever you are, it's a bit of an escape. Escape from, from what is in front of you. I'm not sure why you're doing this. It could be a gazillion reasons, I suppose. But the need for be present in all your undertakings is very, very important. Now, this message can apply to virtually anyone in any situation. Being present is actually very important. And because if we're not present in life, we're actually really not living. We're just kind of on autopilot and existing. So for whatever reason, that's the message for those of you who are single. But I would I would just take it to to for everybody. Endings. There are endings for some of you. And somebody mentioned that I um, give a lot of dark messages. I don't feel I give dark messages, actually. I actually feel I, I try to stay away from giving negative messages. But when Spirit says that there are endings, I don't necessarily see that as a negative message um, unless one is not willing to acknowledge what is happening and then that could be taken as a negative message. So if you feel this is a negative message because I'm saying that there are endings for some of you, it's not. Uh, many times it will be an act of validation for you in case you are wondering if you're making the right decision or if you should make a step forward or step backwards or whatever it is that you're trying to figure out. So whatever messages I give to you, it is never with the intent of being dark or negative. I actually don't like negative messages. I don't feel they serve a purpose unless it's absolutely necessary. So, um, you know, don't take this as a, as a dark or negative message. Uh, as a matter of fact, and he says endings are actually appropriate and to be celebrated because oftentimes, well, almost always, Endings signify that you have come full circle and you have accomplished all you need to accomplish within a certain scenario and it's now time to move on. So it's a bit of a pat in the back. Now, I do understand that endings are not easy because it often involves separating from people we have been connecting to. So emotions and feelings are hurt. No question about it. But bigger picture uh, speaking from a bigger perspective, bigger picture, endings really signify coming full circle because you are ready for the next step. So you can also think of it as a celebration in some funny way, if you want to put it that way. Now, um, let me just see if there's anything else here. For some of you, I hear alone, being alone isn't so bad if you consider the alternative or being with someone who is abusive. So some of you will resonate with this message. Again, this message is pretty straightforward. Um, I'm having difficulty speaking, as you can tell. Um, um, by the way, I'm recording this right after full moon, the full moon in, in May, and um, that has really kind of messed up my energies on top of everything else. But so when I trip on my words, I, please forgive me. It's just, it is what it is. Yeah, so that's the message for some of you. Being alone is not so bad if you consider the alternative, which is with being, which is being with somebody who is abusive. Okay, and I feel like that's a bit of a message for you as well. Uh, perhaps some of you are in a position or in a situation where you feel where you're in an abusive relationship, physically, emotionally, spiritually, whatever it may be. 
but there is a, a fear of being alone so you kind of suck it up just for the sake of not being alone that's never really a good thing uh, as a matter of fact it's never a good thing because you compromise your own well-being and you compromise your own fundamental needs for the sake of a fear which um, is never a good idea and I think that's all I've got regarding relationships no, that's not it. There's more. Some of you are speculating that your partner is cheating. And I clearly heard the word speculating. Okay? Well, the message is this. Know your facts before you take this further. This is very important. And this could be just for one person but it may save you, the one person, a lot of heartache by hearing this message. So please have your facts straight before you make the next move or decision, whatever that may be, okay? And I think with that, uh, I'm gonna leave. Now, the next card is all about finances and career. So let's see what we have there. Ooh, we have the card 10 of swords. That's never a pretty card for most people. Um, it is in reverse. So it's not as terrible as if it was in upright position. What this is telling me is that, first of all, I hear the words stabbed in the back. So this is career and this is finances. Um, some of you have are in a situation where you feel somebody stabbed you in the back. This could be your employer, this could be your coworker, this could be a situation at work or in your career where you feel like you're being stabbed in the back. Some of you, um, you have either given, lent somebody money, uh, somebody borrowed money from you and I feel like something has been stolen. So because this is finances, this could also be a personal situation. Maybe you have um, lent somebody money and they were supposed to pay you, but the person has ran off. And we're talking, we're not talking a couple hundred dollars. We're talking, I, I think, thousands of dollars for some of you. Um, and somebody has disappeared and the money is nowhere to be found. And that's unfortunate. And I'm seeing as much as $10,000 for somebody. So if this, if this connects to you, I feel it is highly unlikely you will get your money back. So this would be obviously not for everybody. It would be a very specific few of you. Um, but I hear the words, cut your losses and move on. Okay. Some of you have come full circle with regards to your work environment. It is no longer serving you. I feel like um, I'm very uncomfortable. I, I, I feel, I actually feel like my back is hurting. Uh, so maybe some of you are working in an environment where you use your back a lot and your back is hurting so it physically doesn't serve you anymore. And maybe it's time for you to think about other options or other resources as far as where you get your income from. Some of you, independent, some of you are, um, what's the word here? Some of you are so independent, you refuse to ask for help. And that's a lot of weight to put on yourself and i feel i feel this is in a work environment but it could also be in a personal situation where you are too proud to ask for help financially and you're struggling to the point of really really bad times but because you are so proud you refuse to ask for help please don't do that there are people who are willing to help you and there are people who will more than happily accommodate your needs. All you have to do is ask. So this is going to be for very few of you. Again, I hear the words, 
stabbed in the back. Um, some of you feel, I feel I have been stabbed in the back in a co-worker situation. D type scenario, you're at work and somebody, you feel like somebody has stabbed you in the back. Somebody has taken credit for the work you have done. Um, somebody has... Yeah, in this particular situation, I feel like somebody has taken credit for your hard work and you are kind of left out in the, in a cold or left in a field, left field, um, feeling very irritated. And yeah, stabbed in the back is what I get. And for some of you, it's going to be to be through someone who feels like a friend. And unfortunately, the friend or who you think is a friend end up ends up betraying you but this is more in a work situation than anything else yes it could be in a situation involving money but i'm really feeling this has to do be, with a work situation now let me just see what else i tune in with this card i feel some of you feel stuck financially you feel stuck and even though you feel stuck I do sense there is a way out of this but you are not considering all the options I feel like you are whatever the situation is stuck it could be stuck at work it could be stuck financially anything that makes you feel stuck with regards to career money or finances uh, or, or work at the same time i feel that you're you're looking only in a certain way and you are not opening yourself up to other opportunities if you are one of those individual who feels stuck in a work environment and you feel like you have no options i would ask you to think again there always are options always even if it means looking at your work situation from a different perspective so that it changes the way you feel about it so that then it changes your behavior towards it uh, but there's definitely a feeling of stuckness here however there is a way out of it but i feel like you're not either you're not ready to accept it you're not ready to take charge or you're not willing to get yourself out of it because it is easier to remain a bit of a victim. And I'm sorry if I'm saying that word, but that is what the message is saying to me. That's that's what I'm hearing. And, and the feeling is, he's saying to me, it feels like a bottomless pit. You just fall and fall and fall and there's no end to it. it it's a feeling of struggle. The Being a victim is a, is a bottomless pit. It feels never ends unless you put a stop to it. If something is not working fundamentally in your work environment, walk away from it. I'm not saying you have to go and quit your job on Monday or whenever you happen to watch, but at least allow yourself the opportunity to open yourself up to something more as opposed to feeling like you're stuck and you're gonna be stuck and it's terrible, but I'm gonna be stuck. There's a way out of this is what I'm feeling. Very important. Get yourself out of your rut. That's really, really important. And a lot of it has to do with your thinking. And I see like it's round and round and round in circles, the same thing. And it's a trap. Okay. So Ten of Swords is, people don't like Ten of Swords, but it it does indicate an ending of a situation. And after endings, there are always new beginnings. And as a matter of fact, when I was connecting with your energy for Scorpio, shuffling the cards i kept seeing the magician so there is um and i actually said new beginnings so magician is the number one it is a brand new cycle there's definitely an ending here on some aspect regarding finance work and career and then i'm hearing fishing boat maybe some of you have a fishing boat work on a fishing boat or anything that's connected to fishing boat or you have fishing boat in the background, your dad worked as a, in a fishing boat, I don't know, but fishing boat is coming up, okay? Now, some of you, all I, what I see is 
I see a feather falling down. So if you've seen feathers lately falling down, I feel like a member of your family that is past is wanting to say hello. And I hear the word mom. So for some of you, if you have seen feather in the last few days, or if you see a feather kind of gently falling down in front of you, um, May or June, for some of you also July, your mom or mother figure, someone who's passed, is wanting to say hello. Okay? And for some of you, you have her necklace. I feel like I've said this to you before. For some of you, there, there are pearls, so obviously this would be more for a female rather than a male. Um, but there, I see necklace, and which is like a necklace, and then I see pearls. Close to the neck, I see pearls, and then I hear the word mom. I also see the number 14. Now, 14th is Mother's Day. Maybe that's why your mom is um, saying hello to you, okay? Now, let's move on to health and, um, yes, well-being. And we have the card Hermit. So Hermit is a wise man. It is another nine, or this is a nine, card number nine. And this is about health. For some of you, this is um, the very basic message here is practice meditation, practice stillness, particularly Obviously, it's good for everyone, but particularly for those of you who suffer from an anxiety or unexplained, unexplained headaches, and he's somehow connecting this to an anxiety. Stillness, very, very important, and that message applies to everyone. For some of you, I'm connecting to the space between my stomach and my breastbone, somewhere in the middle here, a little bit above the belly button. And I feel like I have something is stuck there, it almost feels like air bubble. And I feel like it's not either going one way or the other. There's a stuckness here. And I hear the words breathe, breathe. Maybe some of you are very shallow breathers. That will certainly um, contribute to anxiousness because less oxygen in our brain, um, we will have a tendency to be more anxious. I hear the word plastic surgery. Contemplate before proceeding further. And I clearly heard this, plastic surgery. For those of you who are considering any kind of plastic surgery or any kind of invasive work on um, the way you look, I feel like you need to research further, whether it's researching, and I'm hearing the word facelift, whether it's researching a different doctor, researching a different uh, technique, there is there is need for more research here. Um, for some of you, it's a lift. Maybe it's a tummy lift, breast lift. Uh, it's to do with plastic surgery. Look further. I feel like you are... Certainly don't make a hasty decision when it comes to that. And that was the message at the beginning. Maybe you are going to feel like you want to make a decision. Yes, yes, I want to do this and go. And they're saying, no, there's a need to... Pay attention to your gut feel, but there's a need to investigate this further. And I I strongly feel that for some of you, if you are contemplating any kind of invasive surgery uh, to look better, to make you feel better, I feel like I need to see a different doctor or a different specialist because I'm looking at two different things. It could be a different option, could be a different, okay, could be different technique, could be as simple as a different clinic surgery that is um coming up now some of you who are contemplating surgery and i hear the word elective so i don't think that's necessarily anything serious if you are looking at elective surgery whatever the word elective is again there's a need to investigate further 
Some of you, I feel, have a problem with a knee and you are either knee, looking for knee imp replacement, okay, is there a, I guess there's knee replacements, or something to do with knee and I feel like there's screws in there or something or something needs to be put in there. Um, again, I hear there are options. There are other options and then I hear the word cartilage. So whatever this means to you, and this is obviously not going to apply to all of you, see if, excuse me, that makes any sense to you. And then I, excuse me, hear heart, see a heart and hear heart monitor. Um, some of you, you're going to have your heart monitored or you, there is a need for heart monitor. I don't know if your heart skips a beat or what it is, but I feel like you need, you're going to have a heart monitor or you will, your heart will be monitored. Okay. That's, that's, that's what I, it might be because you have arrhythmia or something of that nature. Nothing serious, but it does come up. And I think that's all I have. It's already 32 minutes. I hope this was helpful. Uh, the energies are a little bit tough to work with, but for whatever remainder of May it is and June, I hope this does bring you some useful information. Feel free to... Um, post your comments. I always read them. I may not always reply to everyone, but I always read them. Thank you so much for watching, for sharing and for liking and for subscribing. It will, will, means the world to me, even though I can't talk. I thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your May and the month of June. Ellen and I look forward to seeing you in um, July. Thank you so much. Take care.